The mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro is the best budget MacBook for macOS Mojave. So with macOS Mojave coming out later this year, Apple axed a lot of its older Macs. Aside from the Mac Pro, which retains support for older models, the new cutoff is machines built in 2012 or later. As such, the mid-2012 MacBook Pro is the cheapest MacBook that is still supported under macOS Mojave. And I think it offers really great value for budget shoppers. Let's start with pricing. These MacBooks have a pretty decent range of prices. They start around 300 bucks for a stock model with the normal signs of wear for an older device, and can go up to five to seven hundred dollars for nicely upgraded ones with Core i7s and large SSDs. My particular model strikes what I think is the perfect balance between price and performance. So what are the specs of this machine? My model has the 2.5 GHz Core i5, that's a third generation Ivy Bridge dual core processor. I upgraded my model to 8 GB of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM, and I upgraded the storage with a 240 GB SanDisk SSD. Graphics are handled with Intel HD Graphics 4000. The 2012 also switches to USB 3.0 and Bluetooth 4.0, a significant connectivity upgrade from the 2011 models. So the reason that I chose this particular configuration with 8 gigs of RAM and a 240 gigabyte SSD is you don't want to spend more money than a machine is worth. So keeping in mind the processor and graphics of this machine, it really isn't worth putting 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 or one terabyte gigabyte SSD because that would be spending a lot of money on a machine that is frankly an older device. Additionally, this Mac performs really quite well for its age. Thanks to the 8GB of RAM and fast SSD storage, this little guy boots up quickly and can handle plentiful web browsing and productivity tasks. The unibody MacBook Pros from 2012 are simply fantastic devices. Not only are they bulletproof in terms of reliability, their biggest advantage is their blend of Retina performance with unibody prices. The 2012 MacBook Pros with Retina displays use the exact same processors as the unibody models, but have much more expensive components. While a nice MacBook Pro unibody can cost as much as a Retina model, these unibodies are much cheaper and easier to repair. Every single component in this device is cheaper than a Retina MacBook Pro. So for example, if I were to get a 2012 Retina MacBook Pro, which has the exact same processor and graphics, and would even have arguably similar RAM and SSD storage, if I were to crack the screen on a Retina MacBook Pro, that repair would cost probably about $275. Whereas on this MacBook Pro, if you were to crack the screen, you could replace the glass for $12 or replace the display for $60. Additionally, the battery on these computers are six years old, but in the Retina, it's fused to the case and costs $200 from Apple. Whereas for a machine such as this, I can find a battery on eBay, an original battery for like $40 and repair it in a couple of minutes. Additionally, these MacBook Pros are incredibly easy to work on and upgrade. Hard drives and RAM can be upgraded in mere moments with a few Phillips head screws, and even a complete motherboard replacement can be done in about half an hour. So there are a few downsides to this MacBook Pro, namely that its design is a bit dated. It dates back to 2008 pretty much with the first aluminum MacBook. It's not an ugly machine, in fact I think it's quite attractive, but it's very thick for 2018 and the bezels are enormous. Additionally, the 1280 by 800 display is absolutely nothing next to a retina panel. In fact, the display is, in my opinion, the weakest part of this machine. It has pretty good colors and saturation, but the viewing angles aren't great and the resolution leaves much to be desired. While it might be cheaper to replace than a retina display, it certainly isn't anywhere near the quality and sharpness of a retina display. But as much as the screen is lacking, this machine makes up for with its keyboard and trackpad, which are, as you would expect, 
really just fantastic. Apple is known for their fantastic trackpads, and this machine is obviously no exception. It uses the same trackpad that was used on MacBook Pros up until about 2015, and it really is a great user interface. Additionally, this uses Apple's classic chiclet keyboard, which is just wonderful. <coughs> so this is not the cheapest unibody MacBook Pro. In fact, if we're looking at 13-inch unibody MacBook Pros, it's the most expensive because it's the newest. But it's also the only one that is supported in macOS Mojave and should be supported for at least a couple years from now. Personally, I think this machine will be supported with software updates until about 2020 when it'll be approximately eight years old. But as of right now, it is officially supported under macOS Mojave. I find it really hard to notice a difference in performance between Mojave and High Sierra, so it'll run really, really well on this machine. Additionally, this machine offers you a pretty decent upgrade path. You can spend about $300 on eBay and get a base model with four gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. And as you save up money, you can put in SSDs, upgrade the RAM, you can even take out the optical drive and put in another hard drive. There's a lot of opportunity for you to customize this machine. So to be able to get into a fully supported modern Mac for just about $300 in its stock configuration, this machine offers fantastic value. So that'll do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Hello. Of course, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani, and don't forget to join my subreddit. The links are in the description below. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.